Hello, in this example, we're going to be using Planck's radiation law for the energy density distribution of black body radiation. Now, in terms of the frequency, in order to find where that maximum energy density is located. And as we can notice from here, that frequency max is proportional to the temperature. We also did something similar, but for wavelengths, so lambda max was inversely proportional to the temperature. Something to have in mind. How do we go about solving this problem? Write down Planck's radiation law in terms of frequency first. Then, in order to find the maximum, we have to take the derivative of this function and equal that to zero. Since we're going to be taking derivatives, and I have this exponential, so let's do a change of variable first uh, in order to simplify the expressions a little bit. So we have the argument of my exponential equals to u. Now I take the derivative of this u with respect to the frequency, and it gives me these bunch of constants. At some fixed temperature, I can just rewrite this expression. My distribution, Planck's distribution, depends only on u, and it's going to be equal to this bunch of constants times this function of u. Now, in order to find the maximum, what I have to do is to find the derivative of my distribution with respect to the frequency, equal that to zero, to find the value, that, the value of the frequency that solves this equation, and that's going to be associated with a maximum on my distribution. So for that, since I'm doing a change of variable, I have to do chain rule in order to solve the complete uh, derivative. Now, there is one suggestion that I've been doing over and over again, and that is take the, your function and just plot it. When you do that, you get a feeling of the behavior of that function and the physics that it's represented. The reason I bring this up here is because we have to take the derivative equal that to zero to find the extreme on my function. But those extremes can be either a maximum or a minimum. But according to these, the physics of this problem, this extreme is guaranteed according from this that it's going to be a maximum. Something to have in mind again, once you start plotting, once you get feeling for the physics of the problem, you can simplify, have a better idea on how to approach these problems. No need for the test of the second derivative, the first derivative is enough. Okay, now let's calculate that derivative, but then we have to do chain rule in order to get the derivative of the distribution that depends on u with respect to the frequency. So we have already all those elements, we have a bunch of constants, I know what is the value of du versus um, du with respect to the frequency, and that's this bunch of constants, and then I have to take the derivative with respect to u of this part of the function that depends on u. For now, I'm not doing it, just I'm putting everything together. Now, if you notice everything that here is in blue, all of those are just a bunch of constants. I can cancel whatever I can cancel out, but at the end, there's all constants that I can bring together into one single term. I'm going to call this alpha. So this alpha contains all those constants here, and then this derivative with respect to u of this function. Now, this derivative in total has to be equal to zero. Now, I have a product of two terms equals zero. The possible solutions is that alpha is equal to zero, or that derivative of this function is equal to zero. If you think about it, alpha cannot be zero because it's a bunch of constants that I know all of them are positive. Even the temperature, because its absolute temperature cannot be a negative number, and all of those being positive numbers, when you multiply them, dividing with one another, they cannot be zero. So the only other solution is that the derivative is equal to zero. So let's take the derivative of this function, which you can take as a product of two functions, u to the power of 3 times all this to the power of minus 1, the derivative of that product is going to be equal to this expression, and that should be then equal to 0. Again, the bunch of constants cannot be 0, the derivative should be equal to 0. Now, this expression, this is the one that you cannot solve analytically. You have to solve this numerically. So you can use either your calculator, you can use uh, Excel, you can use Mathematica, you can use any software that can help you solve this numerically. Let's bring Mathematica to see how we can do that. By the way, suggestion, again, plot your function so you have a good feeling about the physics of your problem. Here I'm plotting Planck's distribution in terms of the frequencies at different temperatures. And you can see that if you follow the maximum, as the temperature goes down, the maximum is shifting to the left, to lower frequencies. And if you increase the temperature, then the maximum is shifting to the right, larger frequencies. So the frequency that gives you the maximum in your distribution, yes, it's directly proportional to the temperature, which is what we wanted to find. So now I have that correlation between the result and visually looking at my graph, effectively the distribution is going like, like this. It has this relationship. I want to find exactly the values and not just the proportionality, and that's why I'm doing all this problem. Okay, in Mathematica, you can also use, since we already brought it up, you can use that to calculate the derivative of the function that we have. So that was this derivative with respect to u of this function. This is what I'm calculating here. And then that's for you to check that it is exactly the same value that you got when you did it by hand. Now, this expression will have to be the one that you're solving. You have to equal that to 0 to make sure that this is your maximum. right? That gives you already your maximum. So let's solve for u to find what value of u gives me 
the maximum in the distribution. For that, I can use this function and solve. And the syntax is, what is the expression that, that I want to solve and for which variable I'm solving? Now, the expression is the derivative that I got should be equal to zero. And please note that I have this double equal. It's not expression equals zero. It's expression equals equals zero. That's the syntax that you have to use in Mathematica. Then with respect to u, comma u. And then when you do that, it suggests you to use this other reduce function for complete solutions. Okay, but it's giving me the solution that u is equal to this value. This is a value that when you plug it back in this expression, that's going to give you equal to zero. Okay, but let's use that suggestion that Mathematica is telling me about using reduce. So I use the function reduce of my expression, which was the derivative equals zero. So equals equals zero. And I'm adding this other condition that u has to be positive. And from the definition of u, that should be clear that u must be positive. And I'm solving for u. That's the, uh, the meaning of that syntax. And then, yes, I got exactly the same value. So I come back to my problem and I say, well, the value of u that solved this problem is 2.82. And when u is equal to 2.82, that's the frequency at which my distribution is a maximum. That's why I call this frequency max. Now, I just rearranged this expression to solve for the frequency max in terms of the temperature, and then I found that it's a bunch of constants times the temperature. So effectively, we have shown that the maximum frequency max is directly proportional to the temperature. So you can even go further and um, just substitute those values, these numerical values. This is going to give you one single constant that then you multiply by the, by the temperature to find frequency max. Once you have this expression, the next thing to do is to actually find that for these, particulars, these particular temperatures, which is, again, if you come back to your graph, you're changing the temperature, and then you're trying to find now what is the frequency that corresponds to this maximum. Now you have an expression where you can solve analytically this problem. I hope this is useful. Please let me know if you have any questions, and I'll talk to you later.